on one is truly the the trailblazer here none of the other programs have this and if i'm wrong let me know in the comment section below today on one released a sneak peek of ai adaptive presets i don't get excited about too many features but this is one of those things that i didn't know i needed if you haven't caught the sneak peek preview of the ai adaptive presets then you really should go and watch it you'll find that video down in the description box below now before you leave you know just hear me out so that way when you're watching it you'll be like okay Maybe I can see how this works in my own production or in my own photography workflow. I'm going to start with my favorite aspect of this, which is the fact that we can create our own adaptive preset. The best thing is you can easily create your own. Anytime you add a filter in effects, you can pick the region that you want to affect over on the left hand side. And you can also adjust it after the fact in the mask section where it says mask AI. You can pick what it's applied to and you can control the mass parameters like density and feather. All of that gets saved into a preset. Essentially what you're doing here, and this isn't like how we create our presets in the past with a mask. This is saving it with the algorithm to go and find whatever it used to uh, decipher what type of mask on one needed to create. If you're an event photographer, for instance, and you want to use the same preset on multiple images, but the subject moves in the frame, or maybe it's just an entirely different subject altogether, but you want the same look. If I had to mask that in, which I do often, uh, that takes a lot of time. We're essentially going to single click editing and then refinement afterwards. This is unheard of unheard of no other application on the market to the best of my knowledge can do what on one is about to release in on one 2023 i know that there were some questions previously about the price and you know or comments about the price the monetary value of this particular feature is worth the increase in price of on one for me now, I can only speak for myself and, you know, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this particular feature and if it's worth the monetary value uh, and knowing that you can create your own. So this is like a customizable thing. Now, obviously, I haven't tested this out, so I don't know how well it works based off of what I'm seeing here and what I'm thinking I'll be able to do with it. Uh, I believe a lot of people will find value in this. We're going to go and take a look at other aspects of this new sneak peek or this new feature that's coming to On1 2023. But if at any point you're finding value in this content, go ahead and smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe if you're new here. And if you're thinking about picking up On1 2023, you can use the discount code FREEWILLPHOTOS20 at checkout and that'll get you 20% off of any purchase as long as it's not a subscription-based package. Called AI Adaptive Presets. And when I click on this, you'll see the categories of presets that it comes with. There's a category for architecture and for landscape and people and cars and sky and wildlife. Those are all things we can recognize and work on. AI adaptive preset. It is stored inside of the preset area, which that is really no big deal. That's no surprise. Uh, just for organizational purposes, that makes sense. Right. Uh, but then you get these categories and. I don't know if these categories are based off of the super select AI and then the categories that you get for the AI adaptive preset are assigned to that. I would imagine that's what it is. Uh, so, you know, let me know in the comment section below if you think that that's a good way of managing these types of presets. Uh, I think it makes perfect sense. So what we have here, though, is a portrait shot in a studio setting. Um, what I want to point out is look at the background and how simple it is. All right. It's important that you identify what type of photo you're using a tool on, because if you use a tool on an image where maybe it's not tailored or it's not uh, specific for that, you may run into some challenges. All right. That's just me being honest. So we look at this background and 
It's very simple. It's also in contrast to the subject. So I think that the AI is going to have an easy time selecting the background and the foreground and identifying uh, the person versus the background. I'm not going to play through uh, how this particular one works because if you're in a studio setting, I think you understand that you'll be able to select the background. There's nothing overly impressive about that. And that's not me digging it on one. That's just me being honest, right? If the background is this simple, we would expect something to work that way. I think where you'll be impressed, and I am also impressed, is when we come to this image right here. So I'm going to go ahead and play the video and then I'll give you my comments. Flat, it was, there's no real sun or life to the photo. So I've built one called Sunny Field. This adds a rich glow, but only to foliage. It takes the person, the subject, and adds a little dynamic contrast so they pop out more, and it adds a sun flare in the corner. Here is something that I think many photographers, if you are a family photographer and you are just out and about taking photos, you're in a park, in a field, then this would be more representative of the type of work that you're doing. And I think this is also representative of the type of work that uh, you're, you'll have of your kids, your friends, your family, you know, you're taking photos of them in places. And then you're like, I need to edit that really quick so I can turn it into something really cool. Well, look at what one click did inside of the AI adaptive preset. This is just amazing. Again, monetary value worth is absolutely worth the dollar amount of on one photo raw and you know that's just me giving my personal opinion uh let me know in the comment section below what you think about that but i think that this is worth the monetary dollar amount of purchasing either an upgrade license or a new license if you're brand new to on one and this is a perfect reason to jump in on one. If you know, if you were to ask me and say, hey, Chris, what do you think? Should I jump in on one uh, for this capability alone? If it works this well, I would absolutely I would say absolutely yes, because uh, you're going to save a ton of time. I mean, if you are a portrait photographer, if you are, um, you know, a paid photographer, this is your profession, you already know what time it is, right? And how much time you're going to save uh, editing photos, all right? Now, what I will say is maybe editing photos is a little bit of a, a pastime and you enjoy it. And maybe this is taking some of the thrill out of that. So let me know in the comment section below if using something like this takes the thrill out of editing photos because you kind of want to have the, the agonizing pain of masking. Um, and I don't want to describe it that way, but you know, that's just the way that I'm going to describe it. Now, Maybe you are not a portrait photographer. Well, don't worry about that. We're going to take a look at a wildlife image here and we're going to see how adaptive or AI adaptive presets works on it. So let's go ahead and roll it. Let's go back to the categories and there's a whole category for wildlife photos. And here I want kind of a similar look where my subject becomes sharper and crisp and the background takes on a little bit of a glow. Let's take a look at the before and the after. There's the original photo. And there's after we see that you can use this on almost any image. Now, again, uh, let's just rewind here for a second. So if you look at the background again, we're almost getting back to that studio look where uh, it isn't in focus. It's out of focus. So this is going like the selective AI or the super select AI is going to have a pretty easy time finding the background. Again, not a dig it on one. I think that it's wise to use the tools on photos. Like if you give on one a good starting point, you're going to get to a great result. All right. So if you are using a lens that maybe isn't getting the image, uh, the background as blurry because maybe you're lacking compression. Uh, and I don't know if I would want to be this close to a bear, like a 24 to 70. That's not working on this image. You're not going to catch me out there uh, shooting a bear with a 24 to 70, right? 
uh, give me a 400 and really I want a 600. That's, that's where I want to be. Right. Uh, and I'm going to add another 600 meters on top of that just by physical separation. Um, but all jokes aside, the background here is blurred. It's easy to separate the subject. And this is the type of photo that I think you're going to want to target to use all of these AI tools on. Now, that's not to say that you can't use this on something that has the background a little bit more in focus. All right. That's not what I'm saying. So don't go in the comment section and be like, Chris, why are you hating on on one? I'm not hating on them. I'm just trying to help you identify uh, where you may need to think about how you're going to use the tools that are coming out in on one 2023 let's fast forward just a little bit and this is what the mask looks like you know one of the things with on one is the masking tools don't allow you to get as finite even if you go into the refine section uh, you're not going to get as fine of a mask as we're we're seeing now with all of these ai tools it's almost like we need the ai tools to mask our images. Again, the background already separated the subject pretty well. I, I think that the AI tool had a little bit of easy lifting here relative to what it could do. I would love to see how well this works in a future uh, photo where the background may not be as uh, blown out or bokeh as some would say. But I think this is a great mask and definitely a much better starting point. Think about it. One click got that. Even if you had to refine this, you're still saving time. That, that's the biggest thing. Like if, if there is any one proposition, like your time is worth money, right? At least my time is worth money, I would say. If I can get this in one click, I just saved myself a lot of money. If you are a paid photographer and you're like, you know what? I just don't see this. Um, let me put it to you like this. If you need to get money back, investing in a program like this is going to help you get your edits done faster so you can deliver to your clients faster, which then gets you to another client. None of the other programs have this. And if I'm wrong, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, just say, Chris, you're wrong. This program can do this. And, and that itself can be a marketing tool that you use that you can turn images faster than other photographers in your area, all because the software that you're using allows you to do that. I'm not trying to gas anybody up on this channel or excite anyone over the top about a feature. But when I seen this, I just you know, started thinking like, this is amazing. And it's something that is so innovative on one is truly the, the trailblazer here. So, uh, I really commend them for this particular tool and I'm excited to try it out. So check out this video right here on super select AI, and let me know what you think over in the comment section there. Until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating peace.